In this video, I'm going to show how to change the power settings on your Steyr Hunting 5 automatic. This is the Scout version, but it's the same for the regular version as well. First thing I'd like to, you know, I guess maybe point out is why would you want to change the power on your 40 joule or 29.5 foot pound rifle? In my case, most of the shooting I do um, is in my backyard. I don't shoot any farther than, you know, 30 yards. The pesting I do um, is on collar doves and it doesn't take much energy to knock them down. So in order to reduce the danger of pass through damaging property, ricochets after it goes through the bird damaging property, I like it to be closer to the 12 joule power setting. And the Steyr is amazingly easy to work with. I'm really enjoying this aspect of the gun. And so, um, what we're going to do is currently the gun is set up at the 40 joule setting, meaning there's no choke, and I'll explain what that is here in a second. And inside the regulator, the Belleville washers are oriented doubled up to make them stronger. They're set for about 140 bar. Um, if I leave the regulator alone and just install a 2.4 millimeter choke, I can drop it down to 24 joules. Um, but what I like to do is I like to go all the way down to the 16 joule setting, which is around, it's supposed to be 12 foot pounds energy, but I was getting closer to around 14. Um, and to do that, we're going to add a 2.2 millimeter choke and set the bar to 85 bar. And to do that, we're just going to change the orientation of the washers inside, inside the regulator. It's surprisingly simple. Um, and put it all back together. All right. So let's get started. First thing you need to do is if you've got a suppressor on the end of your gun, you need to remove it. The reason is, is you can't remove the air cylinder if the moderator is on there. Okay. And we're going to take the pin out of that so we can spin it. One of the really cool things about the Steyr is that you don't have to really, as far as I can tell, ever drain air out of the cylinder. All you got to do is unscrew it from the regulator. Scaredy cats. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> ah, sissies. Okay, so I unscrewed, I unscrewed the cylinder from the gun. And now I'm going to take a four millimeter hex screw and remove the action from the stock. One, two. All right, so we'll just set the stock aside. This is the regulator right there. And it's actually attached using the four outside screws. And these two inside screws are what squeeze the washers together inside the regulator. So you need a two and a half millimeter hex key. And I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna loosen all six. It's easier to actually, if you're going to, if you're just gonna swap out the regulator, you'd only, you know, take out those four. But since we're going to actually open up the regulator, it's easier to loosen them up while they're on the gun. There we go. Go ahead and remove the screws. At least the four on the outside here. I'm really impressed with how easy this gun is to work on. I mean, I thought the leshy was easy, but man, this is even easier. I have yet to have to drain the air out of my cylinder. 
makes working on these things a dream. Okay. There's an O-ring o -ring right there. They're all green on the Steyr. Steyr uses really, apparently, really high quality O-rings as opposed to this, the normal black Bruna 71s. I don't know what they're made out of, but they're supposed to be, you know, longer lasting. So I'm going to just remove the two screws that are holding on, holding the regulator together. They're much shorter than the other four. Okay. And now this pops right off. Okay. Now what you'll notice inside here, okay, this is the cap. This is where the air leaks in or comes in and everything. You've got your Belleville washers in a stack and they're surrounded by this. Didn't want to come off right now and I guess that's fine. If it does come out, it goes right back in. There are some spacers inside there. Um, on mine, looking at it, I think there are two, about half a millimeter spacer. So there's about a one millimeter spacer inside there. And these are the washers that are currently oriented for 40 joules. So if you kind of pull these apart, they're concave and these two are concave together and they're facing these other two that are doubled up. And these are facing this way. They're in this current orientation right here for, you know, 140 bar. We're going to change them into this orientation where they're flip-flopped and pointing at each other and away each other each time. stack is like that. You can kind of see the gaps where the outside there's three gaps right. There's a gap there, gap there, gap there. Just like that. So you just simply set that back inside your regulator. Take your cap. Line up the holes. Snug everything back down. Apologize for the noise. I've been trying my best to avoid everybody in the household. But no, no matter where I go, somebody shows up and makes noise in the background. Okay, so there's a gap there. And you don't want that gap. You're going to cinch these up as tight as you can because what you need to do is you need to put tension on those springs. So cinch these up tight. Don't strip the screws or anything, but and I can always tighten it up a little bit more once I've got it on the gun. But. This is now at 85 bars. We're just going to reinstall it. Line up the holes on the screws. Not nearly as hard as I'm making it look here. 
Especially once you get the first one started, it kind of lines everything up. Okay. Now as you're snugging these up, it's sitting on the washer underneath, so you'll you'll snug one up and then another one will kind of become loose. You just need to keep going over and over until it's all four of these are snug. Again, not so tight that you strip the threads. want them snug. So we're going to assemble the rifle again in reverse order of how we took it apart. Put our two screws back on there. Now I've found even without the choke, just shooting it like this, um, the velocity of the you know, 15.9 grain pellets drops 100 feet per second. And you know, and I get you know double the shot count or somewhere around there. Okay, so I got that on there. We're gonna add our air cylinder back on. And I'll show you how to change the choke. Also an easy process. But to help me out, I am going to use a stand here. The biggest pain in the butt about removing the uh, choke, in my opinion, is that you've got to remove your scope. Okay, and that's the same if you want to remove the barrel. It's a super easy process that I'm not going to do right now, today. But you got to remove your scope. And so what I've done is I line up the back of my rings just to the very front right here. I don't know if you can see front of the uh, magazine port. And uh, that way I can always just put my scope back exactly where I had it zeroed the time before. Bear with me here as I remove my scope. Come on, muscles. Okay. With the scope removed, you'll see this three millimeter hex key this is the uh, this is like the plug that you're going to end up putting one of these chokes in now I bought these chokes there's a 2.2 millimeter and a 2.4 millimeter one from Crail they're about 10 bucks a piece um, while you're at it you can go ahead and order a new regulator also if you want one that's just set for 85 bar they're about 100 bucks a piece um, but honestly it's so easy just to change the washer orientation on them and flip from you know 140 bar to 85 bar and experiment with them that 
Um, I don't think you need to buy the regulator, but you do need, if you really want to get it down to um, 16 joules or 12 foot-pounds, you do need a choke. So here's the 2.2 millimeter choke, and we're going to add it here. So first thing you need to do is remove, remove the plug. And I've got some... Uh, some Loctite on there to help hold it in. Then I'm going to have to probably clean back up and add some new stuff. Okay, so let me just kind of clean the hole out best I can. Then you're just going to take your choke. Now this hole is really, really deep. Um, I don't know, it's a couple centimeters maybe. And so you're just going to screw this all the way in and it'll take a bit. It's quite deep. Screw the choke in, it'll get really easy as it passes, I think, the first set of, you know, the first set of threads. It goes into the next set. Here it is. Just snug it up a little bit there. Then, the set screw needs to be flush. Um, I measured it, and it's about 0.8, oh, Jesus. Hmm. Let's get a little carried away there with our thread locker. Yikes. So you're not going to screw this all the way in, you're just going to screw it in just below the railing. You're supposed to let it set for about an hour before shooting, if you can be that patient. Ideally, you'd do this overnight and let it set, you know, overnight or 24 hours before shooting, but honestly, I, I'm not all that patient. I've shot it just fine with it, just the way it is, before it's had a chance to totally set up. So, you don't screw this in all the way, you just screw it in just below flush, and you're good to go, okay? And now, the gun is totally set up for 24 foot-pounds energy. All I gotta do now is add my scope back on. And since I have it lined up with this back set of mounts flush to here, I always know exactly where my zero is. So it's not quite like Picatinny mounts, but it's it works. 